All right, we're going to cover restrictive and non-restrictive elements, which I know sounds really interesting, uh, but it's actually kind of useful. So hopefully you'll get something out of this. This corresponds to B.1 in IXL, and we'll cover some of those questions here in a little bit, uh, work our score up, and maybe get some ones that are particularly difficult. Uh, let's cover what this stuff is first. A restrictive clause, or excuse me, a restrictive element. Uh, it's a little bit confusing. Um, maybe to clarify, we'll do that. Is there a difference between these two sentences and what they mean? Take a look at them. The initial impression is probably no, but there is a difference here. In this one, we have, let's see, there are maybe five girls, but I like the one that works hard. One of the five of them works hard. In this one, there's just one girl. I like that girl who works hard. She's the one that we're talking about. And what we've done here is we've used a comma to signify something extra about the information in this sentence, which is kind of neat. Here's a really, really uh, difficult one that, that I don't see a lot of people get right. Um, What's the difference here? My brother Steve is funny. My brother Steve is funny. And here, we're assuming you have four brothers, but your brother Steve is funny. The, the one um, who's named Steve is funny. And this one, you assume you only have one brother, and his name is Steve, and he's funny. So how did I figure that out? Here's a general rule. When you see something in commas in a sentence, surrounded by commas, it's usually unnecessary. It can be what's called an, uh, an appositive. Um, it can also be a non-restrictive element. Um, but this is what I mean. Let's say George Washington, the first president, was a nice dude. I don't think he was a very nice dude. Who knows? And his name wasn't G.R. Washington either. Okay. This is separate, or this is uh, surrounded by commas. And really, what that means is you could just get rid of this, right? George Washington was a nice dude. I'm throwing this in. George Washington, the first president. It's like extra information that's not necessary. And the commas signify that. The commas signify that you could take this out and it wouldn't really change the meaning much. And in the same way in this sentence, when Steve is surrounded by commas, we're assuming that we could take it out. We don't really need to know the name of the brother in order to know which one you're talking about. Whereas in this one, we do. We really do need to have the name Steve in there to know which brother we're talking about. So the general rule here is that if we see commas around a name or around something, we know that it's not really necessary. And then we can deduce some things from that. If it's not necessary, that means that there's probably only one. Okay. Um, but it's not always around the name. Sometimes it's like this. I like the girl who works hard. Let's imagine that the sentence kept going. Oops. 
I like the girl that works hard because she's an inspiration. I like the girl who works hard because she's an inspiration. Now again, because we have commas around it, we don't really need that. We don't really need to clarify which girl it is. And so we can kind of deduce that this is one girl. I like the girl because she's an inspiration. There's only one of them. This isn't necessary. We don't need to restrict which girl we're talking about. So we put commas around it. And in a sentence that doesn't continue, we don't need two commas. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of uh, this video, but this is one of the hardest ones to teach. Once you learn it and once you get it, it's not too bad. But I'll admit that as a, as a teacher, this one is difficult. Um, and so don't feel alone if this isn't working. I'm still kind of honing my own method to make this make as much sense as possible. Um, but the best thing I can think of is uh, to teach it is just the rule about the commas. That if you have something around the commas, that means it's unnecessary. And then you can work backwards. If it's unnecessary, that must mean there's only one. Okay. So let's look at an example. We'll be holding our weekly book club meetings at the Beasley Cafe that is just around the corner. So at the Beasley Cafe, does that mean that we have a Beasley Cafe here, a Beasley Cafe here, a Beasley Cafe here, and we're trying to figure out the one that is around the corner? Or are we saying, I'll meet you at the Beasley Cafe, which is around the corner? That one is around the corner. And in this one, we're using that and there's no comma here so in the same way that we didn't have a comma here and that helps us clarify which one we don't have a comma here and that helps us clarify which one there must be a multiple Beasley cafes and I want you to meet the one that is just around the corner we didn't put a comma here because this is necessary in order to figure out where to go, so you're not at the wrong cafe, you need that information. And if you kind of put a comma there, you'd be saying that you don't need it. Okay, that means there's more than one. Gestational diabetes is a blood sugar disorder that develops during pregnancy. Pregnant women who have been diagnosed with the disease must avoid foods high in sugar. So we could have one of two options here. This could say, I wonder if it'll let me copy this. Oh, yes. Pregnant women who have been diagnosed with the disease must avoid food time sugar. So we could either do that, or we could do that. Now, if we do this, then this would all be unnecessary. And we would be talking about all pregnant women. But if we do this, then it is necessary. And we're clarifying that it's just the women who have been diagnosed with the disease. Right? This is necessary to clarify which pregnant women. There are lots of pregnant women. But we just want the ones who have been diagnosed. If we had the comma here, it would just be saying pregnant women in general. All pregnant women. Okay, but that's not the case. The need for discipline and the importance of accepting defeat with grace are lessons that Laura learned from her coach, Blake. Ah, okay. We have a comma. That means Blake's not necessary. We don't need Blake to know who she's talking about, which means that she really only has one coach. It's the only possible option there. If we don't need Blake, then that clarifies. Now, if there were more than if there was more than one coach, then uh, we would need. Uh, no comma there, because we'd be clarifying which one. Our supervisor asked us to complete all of the billing reports regarding new employees by next Friday. So let's see if I can do this again. I can't believe I haven't been using this tactic. Our supervisor asked us to complete all of the billing reports. So what if we had commas there? Then it'd be like we could get rid of that, right? Oops. Uh, 
Our supervisor asked us to complete all the billing reports by next Friday. So, maybe all of the reports. But we don't have commas in this. So that means that it's actually important information. We need to know this to know which ones we're talking about. Our supervisor asked us to complete all the billing reports regarding new employees by next Friday. All right, I'm gonna try a different tactic just in case you're still not getting it. And I'm gonna to try to use inflection. Maybe that'll help. Okay. Unfortunately, all the wedding rings in Mimi's store that are made of pure gold are above my price range. So in this sentence, I would inflect, I would, uh, I would accentuate the word gold. Unfortunately, all the wedding rings in Mimi's store that are made of pure gold are above my price range. If there were commas here, then this would be unnecessary. And I would say it differently. Unfortunately, all the wedding rings in Mimi's store, which are made of pure gold, are above my price range. I'd be saying that all of them are above my price range. But as it's written, this is important, so I need to accent it. Unfortunately, all the wedding rings in Mimi's store that are made of pure gold are above my price range. So only some are, the ones that are made of pure gold. After the dress rehearsal, the cast members who were feeling nervous about the upcoming performance asked to meet with the director. After the dress rehearsal, the cast members who were feeling nervous about the upcoming performance. So your question is whether you should, how it would be different if you had commas here or not. Now, if I had commas there, I'd say it like this. After the dress rehearsal, the cast members who were feeling nervous about the upcoming performance asked to meet the director, right? It's not important, so I'd kind of mumble through it. After the dress rehearsal, the cast members who were feeling nervous about the upcoming performance, they were all were, asked to meet the, the director. All the cast members wanted to meet with the director. But as it is, it's different. It's important, so let's accent the last word. After the dress rehearsal, the cast members who were feeling nervous about the upcoming performance asked to meet with the director. The ones who were feeling nervous wanted to meet. So only some. Okay. If the first method worked better for you, then keep to it. I'm just trying to branch out so I can uh, help as many of you as I can. In March 2014, the National Archives Museum, which is in Washington, D.C., opened an exhibit featuring original handwritten signatures of notable figures such as John Hancock, Catherine Hepburn, and Jackie Robinson. Um, we can just get rid of all this. This is superfluous. Okay. So our question, in March 2014, the National Archives Museum now, if I did this, it'd be a little bit different. In March 2014, the National Archive Museum that is in Washington, that is in Washington, D.C., right? I'd be saying the particular one. But as it stands, I'm kind of mumbling it. In March 2014, the National Archives Museum, which is in Washington, D.C., opened an exhibit. There's only one. Okay, so we're running out of time, but the recap, um, the idea is you got to figure out whether or not there's one or more, and you can do that by figuring out if this is useful or not. And you determine whether it's useful by looking at looking for commas. If there are commas, that's telling you that you can get rid of it. If there are none, it's telling you it's vital. And if it's vital, that means that you have to use it to clarify which one.